Thank you for coming out. And thank you to Wayne Niederhauser, to Salt Lake County Mayor Wilson, and to our Salt Lake City Council for being here today on what is an incredibly significant step of collaboration that we are taking as collective levels of government in Utah to ad address unsheltered homelessness together. Since the downtown shelter closed in late 2019, an unintended but painful deficiency in the system has been apparent all along. And increasingly, there are more people in need of a place to call home than there are housing options, or at many moments in the year, even more spaces than the resource centers can hold. Although the practice of opening a winter overflow shelter, which Salt Lake City first spearheaded when I became mayor in 2020, has addressed the deficiency over the winter months, we're all left with the same question every year when those doors close on the temporary space in April. Where are people supposed to go? Today, through proposed financial support from the city and a unified commitment from our partners at the county and the state, I'm excited to announce my intention to help finance more than 400 housing units for our currently unsheltered individuals that will be developed here in Salt Lake City by mid-April next year when the winter overflow shelter closes. More than 400 housing units, not shelter. And that's only in this county. Wayne Niederhauser will tell you more about the statewide impact they are making with state investment. It is so big. In fact, it's the largest single year increase in permanent and transitional housing in the city's history. We are making this happen. Not one of us, all of us together. This is what cooperative work in government looks like. And we're doing it through shared goals, through major investment and through shared responsibility. This afternoon, I will introduce to our city council my plan for a $6 million grant program that providers can apply for to build developments that include at least 90 units of permanent supportive and transitional housing each. The goal is for their doors to open to unsheltered individuals by April of next year. With these projects already in the development process, this should equate to 400 new homes for people who are currently on the street or in emergency shelters or resource centers. This $6 million, if approved by our council, would combine with affordable housing investments already pledged by the state and by Salt Lake County to bolster what we know is needed most, which is permanent housing for people. This is the collaboration and partnership that the state's homelessness crisis has needed for years. I'll let our partners at the county and state tell you more about their unique investments in partnership. But I can't overstate the changes that this will mean for Salt Lake City. We know that many of the residents and encampments would move indoors if they had a private space of their own available. Some campers continue to decline offers of resource center beds, winter overflow beds, because they prefer to sleep outside rather than stay in a congregate facility. Today we're focused on this proposal and our intent to help generate additional housing. But at the same time, we know that there are big gaps to fill in affordable housing in general. And Salt Lake City this year alone will be bringing millions of dollars to this need. For instance, our redevelopment agency just recently released the notice of funding availability for another $6 million. And that'll be aimed at the RDA's housing priorities, including deeply affordable and family-sized housing. We're also poised to release another $12 million in HUD funding in the coming months from Salt Lake City. But we aren't stopping here, we can't. We will keep innovating and we will keep working every day to bring solutions to the most complex issue that we, like so many other cities and counties and states across this nation, are facing. But today, right now, I'm standing before you grateful I'm grateful for such a massive step forward. It's 400 housing beds steps forward. And it's thanks to the city, it's thanks to Salt Lake County and the state of Utah for their collaborative partnership. And we're taking a monumental step forward for people to call a place home. I'm gonna turn the time over now to Salt Lake County Mayor Jenny Wilson. She'll be followed by State Homeless Services Coordinator Wayne Niederhauser, and then you'll hear from our City Council Chair, Dan Dugan. Well, thank you. Um, 
I po apologize in advance. This is such a complex issue that I probably have a little more to say uh, than I typically do. So the first thing I want to point out is there has been a continued investment by Salt Lake County, the federal government, the state, and cities, including Mayor Mendenhall and Salt Lake City, in, in supporting our homeless population and investing in services to support both those experiencing homelessness but the community as a whole. Nonprofit community groups offer daily supportive services. I want to point out there are amazing members of our community put, that put their own financial resources behind the problem. Gail Miller, Harris Simmons being two of them. There are many others, champions in the community, providing time and personal resources. I want to take a second to just sort of, for the public, lay uh, out the challenge that we're facing right now. Many of you are really um, invested in and understanding uh, the need to move um, homelessness resource centers away from one shelter in the heart of downtown. The shelter model, um, that was our model for dozens of years, um, or decades even, ended up not being a benefit to the community, to the downtown environment, and also was not a benefit to those experiencing homelessness. Uh, just as we were unpacking the problem and relocating people in a way that was more productive to their path to success, COVID hit. And that's led to, uh, by, we do a homelessness count annually, a 20% um, increase and largely uh, due to COVID. So people not only um, dealt with the world differently uh, during those early days of COVID, but also were choosing to keep themselves safe um, in environments, not in crowded shelters. So the shelters adapted, but we also had people choosing to be on the street. So that's been one of the big indicators. Obviously, we're all aware the cost of housing, the rising cost of housing is putting a burden on the system as a whole. And uh, the more people that you have that have uh, a rent go up or for whatever reason have a job loss and end up um, trying to go into a, a, an environment, um, a, new, a new rent or maintain their rent or their mortgage, the harder it is um, with, with um, the skyrocketing cost of housing. Additionally, we are seeing um, resource centers working to stabilize the system, but a lot of volatility, volatility rather, with the population itself, which is an ongoing challenge. Now, the good news is the investments over the past year are truly groundbreaking. Uh, we're able to uh, channel uh, resources from the federal government. We have stable systems to support housing that have been in place. Mayor Mendenhall referred to some. We at Salt Lake County continue year after year to invest um, through federal dollars, local dollars, um, and to utilize state dollars. But we have additional investment made possible due to uh, the federal investments that were made due to COVID. We also um, are making investments in affordable housing. 20 million um, from Salt Lake County alone and a significant amount from the state as well recently. We also have invested in winter overflow. There's a lot of discussion about that right now and I want to thank um, Mayor Silvestrini in Mill Creek. We have identified a location and are moving through a, a public engagement process as we speak um, to assure that people that um, are directly uh, around the facility that we have a system to make it work for the community and be a benefit to the community as we've seen in years past with our winter overflow. And then Salt Lake County continues to invest in criminal justice reforms, seeking to move people to an avenue of accountability, but also a path to success. And those reforms and that investment is significant. And then lastly, our health department, uh, working with cities, Salt Lake City and others, on camp abatements so that we don't see camps um, evolve to the point of unruly, um, unsafe, and unsanitary. And I want to thank our health department who's out there every day, often with Salt Lake City working on these abatements. Now, we understand that our county residents may not always see this, the work being done behind the scenes. As I mentioned, COVID 
uh, resulted in an increase to our unsheltered counts. And most of these initiatives take time. Uh, we're asking for the public's compassion, but we're also asking for their patience. And we promise to report back as we unpack this challenge. And again, Salt Lake County's investments have been extensive, 20 million in affordable housing, that trust fund to go to prevention, to construction, uh, 6 million committed to housing for the medically vulnerable population. And that's one of the programs that Salt Lake City is also focused on in the state as, a, as well. Um, Salt Lake County stepped up to relieve the debt uh, that was owed to shelter the homeless when the uh, expanded shelters, uh, the resource centers came in um, just due to the nature of the cost of building and construction costs. Uh, there was a gap and there was a need and Salt Lake County stepped on that initially to bridge the loan but then in the end providing 6.7 million uh, to get shelter the homeless paid off so that they can uh, support the shelters ongoing operational needs and maintenance and then just recently we offered a closed library in Mill Creek for winter overflow and again we continue to invest in the policy solutions the engagement with these partners, Salt Lake City and the state of Utah are primarily um, partnering with us, but others as well. I want to point out South Salt Lake for their leadership, also Mill Creek um, and Midvale, all with either uh, resource centers in their community or willingness to take on additional shelter. And there are other great cities engaging and helping to fund uh, these solutions as well. So our challenges, housing, 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 the cost of housing, and the market costs we're facing, a mobile and changing population, and the complexity of the continuum of need. If you look at um, the reasons for one to be homeless or face that, um, face homelessness, it's often um, a difficult situation with a job change, and that can impact a family. You might see, as we have known for years, that often people fall sadly into addiction and need support. Mental illness is a challenge, but we are finding more and more and more the trauma. If you witness something as a child that is hard to overcome, it impacts your education, it impacts your ability to engage with community, and ultimately will impact your ability to get in to safe housing. And also, and this particular issue surprised me, even though I've worked on domestic violence issues during my time as an elected official, but in 2020, nearly one in five people experienced homelessness due to domestic violence. We need to change that in our community. So you can see there's a lot to address. Um, please know that we are working, uh, the leaders here and many others in this county. And my last round of um, awareness and I think communication and thanks goes to the state, um, the Herbert administration, the Cox administration now have invested um, in I think a more deliberate way in the legislature in finding solutions. Um, you're now going to hear from a partner, the state's homelessness, um, director and he will take a minute to share with you what the state's doing um, but Wayne's commitment to this is personal he's learned quite a bit with us um, walking you know the river doing our count together a series of meetings um, this is daily work for us and we're proud to do the work the community wants that of us and most importantly anyone facing homelessness um, deserves an opportunity to find a better path thank you so much Thank you, Mayor Wilson, and thank you, Mayor Mendenhall. Uh, this is an uh, unprecedented event. This is state government, county government, and municipal com government coming together to solve a very complex issue, uh, homelessness, the, antith the antithesis of which is housing. Housing with supportive services is key to addressing our homeless situation here in the state. Uh, this came very obvious to me early on in my appointment uh, to this position in the state. And we went to work last year to uh, lobby and um, work with the legislature to get money for housing. We received $55 million from the legislature our office, the Office of Homeless Service, 
Office of Homeless Services went to work quickly and developed a, a grant process, a competitive grant process, as outlined in statute, SB 238, uh, to uh, award this money statewide. Homelessness is a statewide issue, and we're addressing it on a statewide basis. So July, we received applications. We had a very astute group, uh, a team, to score those grants. And last Friday, we awarded those grants statewide. Uh, $55 million was sent out across the state and will affect uh, housing. 1,780 units of affordable housing, about 650 of which are deeply affordable, and over 500 of those will be dedicated to homelessness. This is amazing. We haven't had anything like this before. It takes a partnership like you see today between state and local governments to make this kind of thing happen. And so I'm excited uh, about this. Uh, I look forward to hopefully more money from the legislature this year. And uh, so that uh, each year we're um, able to put more units on the ground and get more people off the street, out of the shelters, and into housing. You know, over time, I believe that it's not unreasonable to think that we'll have shelters uh, where people stay for a very temporary period of time and they're able to get into housing. But it's going to take this kind of effort to make it happen. So thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today. Salt Lake City Council recognizes the complete excuse me, the complicated issues surrounding homelessness and the need for near-term and long-term strategies. We are committed to addressing the need of our residents and truly believe that every resident deserves safety and shelter. We also know that while Salt Lake City is the face of the problem, the issues extend beyond the city limits. So being here today, with Mayor Mendenhall, Mayor Wilson, and the State Homeless Service Coordinator, Wayne Niederhauser, gives me hope that together we will develop housing and resource solutions to support the need of the unsheltered. This is an all, all hands on deck issue. And the City Council looks forward to working with the Mayor, the State, and the County on solutions. Keep the faith. Thank you. Are there any questions for us? Tony? Given the short timeline to April, will you also require a kind of a services component for grant applicants have projects? Yes. Yes. Services and open uh, majority open by April April fifteenth. Yeah, Chad. Mayor Wilson talked about a 20% rise in, in homelessness that we've seen since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, did, did we see that incrementally over that period of time? And, and what is the total number of people that we believe to be homeless in our community right now, tonight? Um, I think maybe Mayor Wilson or Wayne, but know that the Salt Lake Valley Coalition to End Homelessness is the local coordinating committee who's tasked through the federal government, through the state, to help know what the numbers are at a countywide level. Um, and, and in Salt Lake County, it is countywide, but in other parts of the state, it's larger groups of counties. And also to help us come up with the plan. And at this moment, the Utah Homeless Council, which Wayne and his office staff um, is undergoing a strategic plan for statewide homelessness strategy. So with that context, either of you. Yeah, so um, as I mentioned earlier, we were working um, as a community to uh, move people to our new resource centers, uh, just opening a couple when COVID hit. So we were able, through our yearly point in time count, 
uh, to add an additional account during COVID. Um, and we've been able to uh, look at the data in a variety of ways. One of the challenges with data is that the population is always changing. Um, there's a narrative that people only come here because we're so great to our community, and I believe that we are. We're a community of compassion. But in fact, we see people in the winter um, seek shelter in warmer places. So you see a lot of um, shifting of populations, but we can get you the point and count point in time count data and then as the mayor mentioned our uh, local homelessness um, advisory council is managing this issue and working on this issue on a daily basis let me just give you a couple of data points last year 2022 2021 1750 <laughs> 17,500 people touched the homeless system somewhere. That's what our data shows. And on a point, on a given night in January, I guess it was three nights, we counted about 3,700 people in our shelters, this is statewide numbers, in transitional housing or um, camping in places uh, that are not uh, designed for human habitation. So we, we can celebrate some success in those numbers. That means there's thousands of people that came into the system that are no longer in the system that probably got into housing. And so our providers in our system is having success getting people from homelessness and into housing. Uh, there is that persistent homeless population where uh, mental health and, and drug uh, issues, behavioral health issues are a challenge. And that's probably the most challenging population to get into housing. But the system is working and we are, we are having successes. And that's what the data shows. I'll just quickly add, Jed, for the context of since 2020, that there was a, there were tens of millions of dollars in rental and mortgage assistance through the federal government coming into the state, the county and cities, some cities, to help residents stabilize housing. Now, as you know, the state has a little bit of that money left and we hope they'll be able to get it out the door. But most of that money has been pushed through into the community and has run out. So from the direct rental and housing subsidies to the deferments and evictions and different maneuvers that were guided through federal government to help stabilize people. Many people still found themselves coming into homelessness and those who were able to stabilize for a time may not have actually economically recovered from the losses of the pandemic and its consequences and are now facing homelessness as those subsidies evaporate. So what we're looking at is a national issue Salt Lake City, Salt Lake County, the state of Utah is not particularly unique in this elevation of people experiencing homelessness because of the multiplicity of factors um, from a health to an economic perspective across the nation. Yes. So these, the city six million in this grant project are specific for uh, permanent supportive and transitional housing that does have that management aspect to it but these are capital dollars to get those new units online now the state and the county run the mental and behavioral health dollars in the state and so perhaps uh, some of our partners want to respond to how the operational um, aspect of that new and expanded housing will be funded but i i know that we're all also thinking about the next legislative session and the ongoing conversations that we will continue to collectively have with the legislature about um, managing the realities of cost of people with needs in housing, which are people with needs on our streets today. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. just real quick. So there is, as the mayor mentioned, a larger web of, sorry, I have to lower this every time. Oops, and I lost a mic. Um, but the, there's a complex web of investment around the criminal justice system, not to imply that people facing homelessness are necessarily um, 
you know, facing those challenges. But there's quite a bit of investment in um, mental health in traditional ways, right? We've seen that over the years. One of the big benefits, and I have to thank the state residents for this, was the expansion of Medicaid. That allows us to put more dollars into the system. Salt Lake County saw a corresponding decrease from the state. Not dollar for dollar, we're still ahead. So we've seen a lot of expansion with our treatment programs and that web um, interfaces with the homelessness uh, efforts that we're all working through. So there's a substantial investment in many other ways other than the bricks and mortar that we're talking about today, specifically for Salt Lake City's investment. The broader systems clearly are supporting the efforts as well. I absolutely cannot speak for the city council, but you can see them standing here. I think that um, part of what what Wayne characterized so well about the enormity of this is not only we're talking about having permanent housing units for people who exit onto the streets on April 15th every year from winter overflow shelter or who are waiting right now in our HRCs, but it's collaboration that's happening. It's all levels of government from your capital city to your capital county to the hill with Wayne's leadership, the state leadership saying, yeah, we have to work together to do this better and it's hard conversations and we all have to contribute and we're finally doing it. So I can't speak for our city council, but I think it'll be a good discussion tonight. And then I want to add, uh, in general, you know, this is a very you know, heated topic around town. Residents always have an opinion on this. Uh, your message to community members that um, for a long time, people have always told me, and maybe other news outlets or two, that it had just been a Band-Aid issue, you know, mm. open these overflow shelters. And like you had started the start of the press conference, you said, looking for more permanent housing. You know, come next April and hope that this proposal is approved. Um, what do you hope the community sees with what the, the city is doing, uh, with what Mayor Wilson is doing, and other city leaders and the homelessness community? First of all, I hope they see that this is a solution-oriented group that is working. Today we're just talking about the capital to bring these units online, but we could just, have eas just as easily have been standing here to talk about the very first time in my lifetime that cities outside of Salt Lake City and South Salt Lake have said, South Lake City and South Salt Lake have done their part with winter shelter. It's time that we step up and we see a winter shelter coordinated by other cities in this county, not in our city this year, that's decided before winter comes and that has funding from the state. And we see mitigation dollars from the state legislation that went through earlier this year. For the first time, your capital city is getting guaranteed mitigation support from the legislature where South Salt Lake and Midvale always have. So there is a shift happening here. There's a real change around the shared goals, the shared investment, and the shared responsibility, most of all, for what is a statewide crisis that is no longer and inappropriately being targeted at one or a few cities. Yes, two more questions here and then there. Yes. Yes, staffing for case managers, for social workers, for service providers, including the city's own social worker programs that we run through our police department and our fire department, um, are, it's a struggle na nationwide right now. Part of this tr challenge with last year, as you'll recall, is that the, the property process with the o owner of the former Ramada and the um, just getting the place ready took a lot longer than anyone wanted it to and so there was a chicken or the egg of when can we start actually recruiting because when do we have the assurity that we're going to be able to open and unfortunately that didn't happen until February last year. Because we're able to start and we have the assurance and the support from the state in the summer um, that gives the service providers much more leeway, I think, to be able to take the time that, that just this market and the reality of hiring um, does take many more months than we want it to. But it's a great time to give a plug if anybody wants is out there, is thinking about a career change, is thinking about what to do um, for a career path. They, there is much need in the system of service provision for you. Please um, reach out to service providers if that's something that you're interested in.
I, I wanted to say one other thing, which is the inefficiency of the winter system. Somebody else brought that up, that no, no one has ever said, the best way to do this is to figure out a couple months before or a few weeks before where we're going to put 100 or 200 or 300 or 400 people and then hurry up and try to make a place feasible, make sure it's safe, make sure there's bathrooms, make sure it has fire suppression, and then hurry up and hire appropriate uh, people to staff and keep the place safe. No one has ever thought that was a good idea. It hasn't been a good idea. And I think that in the conversations with the cities around this county as we contemplated a winter shelter, we all recognize that from a taxpayer dollar perspective, efficiency of the system, stability for the service providers who we rely on, we need a better pathway. And this year was the first step toward, in my opinion, what is a better path of of a solid plan around winter shelter going forward for Salt Lake County. Okay, yes. That's a um, that's a technical question. I don't know the answer to, but we can get it to you before you leave. Very fast is my immediate answer. Okay, thank you for coming out today. I think a lot, most of us would be happy to do one-on-ones if you want to.